Well, hello and a very good morning and a very warm welcome to the Holy Redeemer online service this morning. If you're a Holy Redeemer regular, it's great to see you. If you're here just investigating the claims of Jesus Christ, you are most welcome. And if you're here joining us from somewhere else in the world, we're really pleased to have you with us this morning. We're going to sing together. We're going to pray for ourselves and the needs of our world. And we're going to hear God speaking to us in the reading and preaching of his word, the Bible. This morning, we continue our series in Luke chapter 12, where we read the parable of the selfish and greedy farmer. But Jesus warns us, verse 15, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. Jesus liberates us from our greedy selfishness to live successfully for God. And Ian, our vicar, will be helping us to think more about that later in this morning's service. But as we begin together, why don't I say a prayer for us? Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We've now the chance to sing together, and I pray that the truths expressed in this song will be an encouragement to us, whatever our experiences of COVID-19 and the lockdown. Uh, in joy, in grief, in lonely sin, never alone, for Christ is ours. He lives in us. We live in him. alone, for Christ is here. Emmanuel, our God come near. We're not alone, for to our world, Jesus has come, eternal word. And as he speaks, our souls laid bare. Naked as shame, sin is made clear. He clothes us in His love, never alone. Christ is with us, is with us. The longest walk, a darkest day, the pressing crowd, His mounting pain. Load of grief and shame, breathless that we should breathe again. Father, forgive them, comes his cry. Silence from God blackens the sky, a creeping dread in every heart. Lost in the world, now God departs. The dawn will come, the sun will rise Out of the grave we'll see hope's light Tomb open wide, stone rolled away Morning has come, a brand new day
Later in our service, we're going to be reading from Luke chapter 12 and the parable of the rich, greedy and selfish farmer. He thought only of piling up riches for himself. And in his selfishness, he became blind to his mortality and to God's reality. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. And that's the opening verse of the psalm that we're now going to read together. It's Psalm 14, and the words are going to appear on your screen. Psalm 14, for the director of music of David. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread, for God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. If we are those trusting in the Lord Jesus, we can take great assurance from verses 4 to 6 of Psalm 14. We do have Jesus' status of being righteous in God's sight. We have sought and we have found our refuge in the Lord. However, I'm sure like me, you'll be able to think of times in the last week when you have thought, acted or spoken as if God didn't exist. We now have the chance to say sorry to God, to seek the Lord's forgiveness as we pray together the words of our prayer of confession, which are appearing on your screen now. Let's pray together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, We acknowledge and confess our many sins, which we have committed by thought, word and deed against your divine majesty, provoking your wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are truly sorry for all our misdoings. The memory of them grieves us. The burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that from now on we may always serve and please you in lives wholly renewed by your Spirit to the honour and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Recently, our teenagers in Sunday school have been reading Paul's letter to the Colossians. And there in Colossians chapter 1, Paul writes this. For he, that is God, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Our Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you this morning that in the Lord Jesus you have rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his wonderful light. Thank you that on the cross he paid the price that our sin deserved and bought for us our forgiveness. We do thank you once again this morning for him. Amen. As I mentioned When we began our service, it's great to have you with us wherever in the world you are watching from. And we're to praise God for the technology which allows this sort of meeting to even happen. 
but we would ask please that you make it a priority to be watching this live stream with us at 10.45am on a Sunday morning. That way we can be sure that as a church family we are meeting together, we're gathering as best we can at 10.45 on a Sunday morning around God's word. And it, importantly, it keeps us in the routine as well. So when we're back to meeting together in the church hall, um, we'll be there on time at 10.45. And it also means that we're serving one another. It means that church isn't on our terms. It's uh, not that we're viewing this uh, when it's most convenient to us, um, but we're actually serving one another by being here at week by week at 10.45 on a Sunday morning. We'd love it if you were able to watch us um, or watch this join with us, meet with us uh, in real time. Please do go on checking our website for um, updates and information on there about our church activities. Uh, on there, there is a form for financial giving. Uh, there's also a form for requesting practical help should you require it during this time. Uh, and also uh, for prayer requests, if you'd like us to be praying anything in particular for us, uh, for you, uh, please do um, let us know. Uh, this Wednesday evening, again at eight o'clock, we have the opportunity to meet online this week to think about the wonderful Psalm 23 and the Lord, our Good Shepherd. This will happen via Zoom and the link for joining us is going to be in the email that comes to you this Wednesday or can also be found on the church website too. It's great to be thinking and to be speaking God's word to one another. We're also going to meet this coming Friday, Friday the 8th of May. It's bank holiday Friday, a day off, a day at home. <laughs> well, uh, we've got a bit of fun for families with younger children. Um, at two o'clock, uh, we're going to have a, a families quiz with younger children particularly in mind. And then in the evening at eight o'clock for teenagers and adults, uh, we're going to have a church family quiz. Uh, so please do come along and join us this coming Friday. Again, details of how to join us uh, will be made available in the weekly bulletin and also on the church website. Finally, uh, to say we'll meet straight away after this morning's service too for coffee, tea, biscuits uh, and conversation. Uh, even if you can just pop in for five minutes, it would be great to see you. And the link for joining us on that Zoom meeting is to be found in the description below this video um, or also on the weekly email update that you were sent on Wednesday. Uh, just to reassure you once again uh, that we will be using the Zoom waiting room facility uh, and only admitting people who we know. Uh, so again, you know that you can be uh, safe and you will be speaking amongst friends. Good morning. Well, for the past few weeks, we've been doing our memory verse challenge and we've all been trying to learn Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20. Next week, we'll be starting a new memory verse. But before we move on, we'd like to hear how you've been getting on at home. So this week, I'd like to ask everyone who can to make a video of yourself saying the memory verse and send it in. You can do this by emailing us or by posting it to social media and linking in the Holy Redeemer. There'll be details of how to do that in the description box below. But for now, let's hear today's Bible story. In today's Bible story, Jesus met two brothers who were arguing about money. It's mine, said one brother. No, it's mine, said the other. Jesus could see that these brothers thought that money was the most important thing. And he wanted to teach them some more about money. So he turned to the crowd and told a story. He said once there was a farmer and this farmer had had a really good year on his farm. He had grown so much grain. Look, said the farmer, I'm rich. I can fill up my barn. And still, I have so much left over. What shall I do? Well, of course, I will build an even bigger barn. And he smiled to himself as he saw how much he had. Life is good, said the farmer. 
I can sit back and take life easy. Well, little did the farmer know that his life was coming to an end. God said to him, you fool, you silly man, for tonight you will die. And then who will enjoy all of the good things you've built up for yourself? When you've gone, it won't matter how much grain you have or how much money you have. What is important on that day or on that night is how you've treated God. Jesus said, this is how it will be for people who have stored up things for themselves, but haven't been rich towards God. And Jesus said this as a warning to everyone. Because we can be just like the man. You see, God is our maker and he says he should be the number one, the thing we want most and the thing that we love most. But the man, and often us too, well, he thought that money was more important than God and he put it as number one. But Jesus said this was a foolish thing to do because in the end, he didn't have his money and he didn't have God. He had nothing. Well, what about us today? What do we think is our number one most important thing? Well, often don't we spend so much of our time wanting things, wanting to have nice clothes or great toys and gadgets, wanting money and putting all those things as number one instead of God. Well, we need to hear Jesus's warning today and ask for God's help to put him as number one. Let's pray together now. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this warning today. We're sorry that we're often foolish like the man and think that other things are more important than you. Help us to put you as number one this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hi! We're going to sing a song about our very good God who loves and cares for us. It's called Clap Your Hands. Now I'm sure you already know how to clap your hands, but just in case you don't, you take one hand and the other hand and you hit them together and they make a sound like this. Hang on. That's not right. Oh, there we go. Okay, how about you clap along with me? We're going to pray now. We're going to pray for our world, our country, our church and our partnership churches. 
the sick and the suffering. And we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together and the Church's Prayer for this week. Let's pray for the world first. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, the healer of nations and judge of all, may this pandemic give all nations reason to humble ourselves under your mighty hand through this time of anxiety and danger and beyond. In your anger, remember mercy, not giving us all we deserve for our many sins, but strengthening us to repent and recover from all we must endure. For we ask in the name of your precious Saviour, Jesus Christ, who bore our sicknesses and carried our sorrows, that we might share his eternal life. Amen. We pray for the key workers and the government of the, the nation, the opposition, and all those who are making very big decisions. Our gracious Father, thank you for all those working in health care, and especially for those in our congregation who are serving the community within the NHS and public health bodies. Grant them and all who work in essential services protection and strength for each day's challenges and to work with skill and patience. We also pray for the Prime Minister, the Health Secretary, the Chief Medical and Scientific Officers as they work uh, together with others on their team. Please give them wisdom and insight sufficient for the decisions they need to make in this pandemic. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for our own church and for our partnership churches, especially today for Grace Church Dulwich. We also remember Emmanuel Wimbledon and St Luke's Wimbledon Park. Sovereign Lord, you promise that the gates of Hades will not prevent you building your church. And we claim that promise and ask you to build this church, Holy Redeemer Streatham, and our partnership churches, even during this lockdown. Please give us the desire and skill to be able to meet virtually until we can meet face to face. And may we have your strength to love and care for each other and our neighbours. Please fix our hearts on heaven and our minds on pleasing you in everything so that your church may be stronger and closer to you by the end of this pandemic. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for those who are sick and suffering and for the bereaved. O Lord, look down from heaven and visit and relieve those who are ill and bereaved. We pray today for Cecil Devonish, Ken Gordon and Rosie Agina, and for others who are on our hearts and for the Jordan family and Christivi and Harry and Heber's family in their bereavement. You are a strong tower to all who put their trust in you. May those who suffer and grieve find in you their defence. And may they know and feel that there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by whom and through whom we may receive health and salvation except the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray now the Lord's Prayer and do join with me, and the words will come up on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the Church's prayer for this week. O Lord, who never fails to help and govern those whom you bring up in your steadfast fear and love, keep us, we pray, under the protection of your good providence and give us a right fear and love of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we hear God speaking to us by his word, we have the opportunity to declare our faith in the words of the creed. A creed is a short and simple summary of the truths at the centre of the Christian faith. And if you are trusting in the Lord Jesus, I would invite you to join in these words with me. If you're not calling Jesus your king, why not read the words to yourself quietly and think about them and Ask yourself, is there anything here that I find objectionable? Uh, and if you do, uh, please do be in touch with a Christian friend or us at Holy Redeemer. And uh, we would love to talk to you about what Christians believe. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. The reading today is from Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. This morning we're thinking about Luke chapter 12 verses 13 to 21 and asking the question, are we wise or foolish? Are, is, our, is our life a success or a failure? Let's pray as we begin. Almighty God, you promised to give your Holy Spirit to all who ask. So we pray that he might be our teacher now, giving us understanding of your word, showing us your son, and giving us faith in him. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The COVID-19 crisis is causing us to do a lot of thinking and it's getting us in training to think about some important questions and today we've got a very important question. What is it to have a successful life? Where do we turn for examples of successful lives? I suppose we might think about David and Victoria Beckham for example. They, they're famous and they're, they're rich and uh, we might say that their lives are a success or we might think about the, the Oscar winners at the Oscar Awards and they're beautiful, they're successful, they're rich and uh, we might say that's the gold standard, that's the, the standard to aspire to of the successful life. Well, today we're going to think about what God says is a successful life from Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. And we've got three points. The first one is, don't be greedy. Life is more than possessions. Don't be a fool, forgetting that you are mortal and accountable to God. And do be wise and live for the Lord who gives us everything. That's our third point. So our first one today, don't be greedy. Life is more than possessions. We're reading Luke chapter 12 verses 13 to 15. Somebody in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. You remember from last week that there was a big crowd that had gathered eager to, to hear Jesus. 
And imagine, I suppose, Wimbledon on uh, the, uh, the finals day, and there's Henman Hill with people jostling to see the big screen in the final. Uh, but except this, this is uh, people jostling to see Jesus and to hear what he's saying. And he turns away from the crowd to his disciples. You remember from last week in verse one, and he warns them, he warns them against the yeast, that's the influence of the, of the, the Pharisees who are the, the religious leaders of the day. And he tells them, that particularly they're to be warned about their hypocrisy. There in verse 1, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. At this point, somebody in the crowd uh, turns to Jesus and says, can you sort out the inheritance problem we've got? And Jesus doesn't uh, sort it out. Uh, he leaves that for the, uh, the litigation and the, uh, the probate people. But he uses the question <clears throat> to deal with a, a problem in the human heart which is the problem of greed. And he warns us about it in what he says in verse 15. Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. He probably had in mind the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. And it was a, a follow on from that point that he was making earlier uh, to be warned about hypocrisy because back in chapter 11 and verse 39, Jesus had just said that the religious leaders, the Pharisees of the day, were foolish people because they washed the outside of the cups and the dishes. But inside, he said, they were full of wickedness and greed. That's uh, chapter 11, verse 39 and 40. And of course, Jesus spoke a lot about money, more than anything else, apart from the kingdom of God. And for good reason, it can become the God that we live for. In chapter 16 of Luke's gospel, verse 13, Jesus warns, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And Luke records the Pharisees who loved money heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. You can imagine them, can't you? Uh, Jesus, you don't live in the real world. It's money that makes this world go round. To which Jesus replied, no, it's you who don't live in the real world. And he says in verse 15 of chapter 16, what people value highly, namely money, God counts as insignificant. That's the word he uses, insignificant. The state of our hearts matter to God much more than the size of our bank accounts. Because of course, for all their claims to be generous religious people, uh, we read uh, chapter 11, verse 42, the Pharisees, uh, religiously gave 10% of all that they, they had, including their mint and their herbs. Uh, but Jesus says they weren't actually generous. They were greedy people. Well, surely it would be different for God's people today. Well, not if the Pharisees are anything to go by. We'll all drift in that direction and become like them, unless the Lord daily protects us from the greed that's in our hearts. <clears throat> the Nobel Prize winner, uh, the economist Milton Friedman says, the whole world's economy is driven by greed. Is there some society that you know that doesn't run on greed, he asks. You think uh, Russia doesn't run on greed? You think China doesn't run on greed? The world runs on individuals pursuing their separate interests. Greed is what the make, makes the world go round, according to the economist Milton Friedman. Well, we look at people like David and Victoria Beckham and the Oscar winners. And we think that is what life is all about, don't we? That is successful life. Having the pleasures and the acclaim of the world that comes from having the money and the fame that brings it. But Jesus tells us in verse 15, that's not what makes for a successful life in God's eyes. It's not that the Bible is against money. It's useful as a means to an end. But when it becomes an end in itself, it's taken God's place. And of course, we all know that money doesn't give us what it claims it will give us. We think it'll make us happy. But of course, if you travel around the world, and some people have had the opportunity to do that, and you'll, you'll have been to maybe some poorer parts of the world, and uh, you'll have seen for your own eyes that uh, people who have less money than we do in, in the Western world are more happy. Have you noticed that? And uh, once uh, the richest man in the world was asked, uh, what would make him fulfilled and happy? How much would it take? And his answer, just a little bit more. 
We know deep down that money doesn't make us happy and it doesn't deliver the significance and the security that it promises. So Jesus is warning us and them, don't be greedy. There's more to life than money. And he goes on to give the second warning. Don't be a fool, forgetting you are mortal and accountable to God. After giving them the proverb in verse 15, he goes on to give them the, the parable in uh, verses 13, uh, 16 to 20. It's a story about a farmer who's a very successful farmer. Uh, his crops did well and he had a bumper harvest, so much so that he had too, much cro too many crops uh, for the barn space that he had. So he pulled down the barns and he built bigger ones to, to store all the crop that he had been given. If he'd been a wise man, he'd have thanked God. He'd given him such a good harvest by providing the right conditions and the ground to produce such a crop. But no, in verses 16 to 19, he is totally curved in on himself. He talks about my crops, my barns, ultimately my life, my soul, myself is what his focus is entirely on. There's no thought for the God who gave it to him all at all. No doubt he'd have been thought a great success by most of his friends and contemporaries. But God speaks in the parable that Jesus tells and he declares what he thinks of him. It's there in verse 20. He says, you're a fool. He made two howlers, two fatal mistakes. He forgot that he is mortal, number one, and he forgot that he is accountable to God, number two. God says, verse 20, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you, then who will get what you've prepared for yourself? I suppose we can imagine him, can't we? Uh, celebrating at his retirement party and uh, there's his lovely wife and lots of friends and everybody's congratulating him on the success that he's made of his life and they're talking about the the world travel that he's going to be able to do now and talking about which of the Cunard cruises he's going to go on first. There's a toast being proposed to uh, to his next trip when suddenly he has a massive heart attack and was certified dead on arrival at the hospital. Is it not foolish how little we talk about death in 21st century Britain? Considering it's the most certain thing in life, we just don't go there, do we? If you want to spoil a relaxing evening after the coronavirus pandemic is over with your friends around the meal table, uh, try introducing the topic of death and say, perhaps, um, did you give any consideration to your death during the pandemic? Well, there'd be a stony silence and then somebody will very quickly change the subject. Yet it's wise to think about it, isn't it? Because it's only from that end of life, from death, that we can decide whether the life has been lived well or not. The question is, what will our friends and our family think about us when we die? More to the point even than that, what will God say then? Because this foolish man's second mistake was to forget that he was accountable to God. Uh, look at verse 21. This is how it will be for whoever stores up for themselves things, but is not rich towards God. Those who are like this man will be declared a fool by the one whose judgment matters most on the day that matters most, the day when our eternal destiny is declared. His life was found to be a failure, not a success. He'd forgotten that God would require him to give an account for his life. So don't be a fool. Rather, remember the third point, which is coming now. Be wise and live for the Lord who gives us everything. Verse 21, be rich towards God. Every one of us will die and will leave everything we've got behind and face God on that day it'll be clear that everything we have isn't ours, but God's. And God will demand everything back, everything we have. He made it all and he owns it all. The human tragedy is that without Jesus, this man in the parable is us. By nature, we use everything God has given us to serve ourselves, pursuing our own gain. But Jesus, the most loving person ever, says, that we're fools for storing up for ourselves what isn't ours to keep. And wonderfully, 
He points to the way out of the selfish life that is so natural to us. There's a path to a successful life, a life that is rich towards God. Where is it? Well, it's found by turning and trusting and following Jesus. Jesus invites you today to turn away from pursuing your own gain, to trust him to forgive the times you've done that, and to follow him by putting your whole life into his hands. If you've not done that, what is stopping you? Jesus is willing to save you from the greed that infects all our hearts. He is the only person who can. You could pray to God and begin following Jesus this morning, if you're not already. And for those who are following Jesus, his warning is for us in verse 15, because we can be as hypocritical as the Pharisees, claiming to live for God without facing the greed in our hearts. Jesus is inviting us today to put our money, our possessions, our home, our talents, our time, and our very lives into his hands to rededicate them to his service. I don't know if you've seen any of the Toy Story films, there's a great storyline that goes through them all. And it's uh, how all the toys belong to Andy and love being Andy's. Uh, several times in the, in the films, the toys get into all sorts of trouble. And Woody, the main character, uh, looks at his foot, which has Andy's name on it. And he reminds the other toys that they're not their own. They belong to Andy. The point is, if you're a Christian listening today, you belong to Jesus. His name should be stamped all over the money, possessions, home, talents, and time, and life that is yours. Let's think about what that may look like in practice. Let's take the, the hardest one first, money. Honestly, what percentage of your money do you use to serve Jesus? 0%? 2%? 10%? 20%? It's got to be 100% because Jesus doesn't own 10% of you. Jesus didn't die for 10% of you. He died for all of you, and he owns all of you. Most of us use credit cards and debit cards, and we should really put a sticker with Jesus' name on them, because every time we spend on them, it's his money that we're spending. What about our homes? Is it the place that we keep for ourselves to relax and to do what we feel like doing? and shut the door on the outside world, unless we want particular people to come in and share it with us? Or is it the place that we use to invite our neighbours around, to get to know them, so that they might find out about Jesus through us, and bring people back from church to, uh, may, maybe people who have visited the church for the first time, and give them a cup of coffee, and get to know them a bit, and make them welcome, and perhaps even uh, invite in one or two other members of the church family to get to know them and build up one another in truth and love. What about our time? Imagine what it would be like if we were consciously giving every minute of every day to Jesus to use in his way. Well, let's pray for the ability to remember that in the week ahead and see what a difference it might make. You see, all the stuff we own and our very lives that we have don't belong to us. They belong to the God who's generously given them to us and who loves us. And in a little while, he's going to ask for them back. So if you're not a Christian and you're listening in today, Jesus says you can be a fool and store up for yourself, only to lose it all. Or you can follow me and give up what you cannot keep to take hold of an eternity that you cannot lose. And if you are following Jesus this morning, remember that you belong to Jesus twice over. He made you and he died for you. Remember that and treasure that you are his and use all he has given you in his service. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you make us in your image and give us all we have. Please forgive us, your people, for being greedy. Please forgive the hypocrisy in claiming to worship you alone and in reality living for the pleasures and possessions of this world and even trusting in them for our significance and security rather than you. Please help us to live for you alone. And please help others who have not yet started to follow you to see that it is foolish to live for ourselves. 
and turn to you. Trust that you've given your life so that we may come back to you and start following you. Amen. Well, thanks very much for joining us this morning. That brings us to the end of our formal time together. Of course, you can be joining us on our after church tea and coffee meetup on Zoom. The link is in the description below this video or on your weekly email. We also look forward to seeing you, of course, on Wednesday for our midweek home group looking at Psalm 23 and then the quiz night or quiz afternoon for the children on Friday before we see you again next Sunday at 10.45. As we finish together, why don't we share in the words of the grace. This comes from the end of Paul's letter to the Corinthians, second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.